the title of this video the girl in the box this is a story of a little Jane Doe a little girl estimated to be around five years of age um, who was found in a box floating um, school coal river in Philadelphia here is the story that is on unidentified wiki Jane Doe 1962 the case. A child's remains were found inside a milk crate. A newspaper dated March 11, 1962 was found with the body, which had been wrapped in a white apron and a piece of clear blue plastic. The milk crate had been weighed down with bricks. She had antemortem trauma to her arms, which was consistent with abuse, and her ring finger on her right hand had recently been amputated. She was missing her head and it has never been found. According to the reports, the head had been removed with a sharp instrument. She had severe post-mortem burns to her back and feet, suggesting that someone had tried to burn her body, possibly in an incinerator. There's very little else about this. Um, this is from newspapers.com, and it just says that the little child who was African American was estimated to be about five years old, was found in the river at Philadelphia. The Motor Harbor Patrol recovered the torso after a barge deckhand noticed a wooden milk box tied with rope floating in the river. The deckhand retrieved the box and cut it open to find the child's torso. The newspaper dated March 11, 1962. Um, this story had so little, there was so little to go on. Here's one more article that has very little information. It basically says the same thing. Never did the man expect what he would find inside the box when he cut open the milk crate to find a child's headless torso wrapped in this apron and plastic. Um, found May the 31st, 1960, or May the 3rd, rather, 1962. Estimated to be between the ages of four and six. They estimate that she had been dead between five days and 60 days at the time of her discovery. She weighed around 45 pounds and was around three foot tall. Hair and eye color, of course, are unknown, but she was African American. Uh, she was badly decomposed and had been decapitated and the cause of death was, of course, homicide. Injuries included um, decapitation. Her right ring finger had been amputated and was covered with gauze and adhesive tape. She showed signs of trauma to both her arms, which was consistent with abuse prior to her death, and burns on her feet and back. Um, there was a child who was ruled out, Adele Marie Wells. Now, there's another child, and I'll just read about this story because, like I said, that was pretty much all I could find about this from medium.com. Is she Philadelphia's girl in the box? The disappearance of Hattie Yvonne Jackson. Months after her sudden and mysterious disappearance, a corpse was found in a milk box along the School Call River. Although an official connection between the cases were ruled out, theories are that, they st that this may still be this child. Um, Hattie Yvonne Jackson was around six to seven years of age when she went missing on July the 21st, 1961. In the afternoon, she was with some other children, her 10-year-old brother, and they had gone to Rock Creek Park in Washington, D.C. 
They were swimming in a creek when a policeman came by and told them that they were not allowed to be in that water because it was polluted. An unidentified middle-aged white man who was in the park was witnessed offering the children a ride to another nearby park where he told them that they could swim. The children declined his offer and returned to playing normally. After a while, they realized that Hattie was gone. The young girl was never retrieved alive. However, she was seen after she went missing. Two hikers claim they saw two young men helping Hattie into a grayish-blue Chrysler Plymouth near Rock Creek Park. It was proven that this was Hattie because search dogs traced her scent to the area where the sighting was made. The car's driver matched the description of the man who had been seen talking to the children in the park. Therefore, the region where she went missing was searched extensively, but nothing was ever found. Is it possible that she was taken out of state and ended up in this Philadelphia River? On May the 3rd, 1962, the corpse of a little girl was found in the river outside Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The body was stuffed in a milk box with clotheslines wrapped around it. The girl was estimated to be between four and six years old, and it was estimated that she had possibly died as early as March. She was missing her head and her fourth finger on her right hand. Um, whenever a body like this is disposed of, the fact that someone took the time, they tried to burn the child and were unsuccessful. And they were trying to cover up evidence, of course, probably of sexual abuse. And it could also be that they tried to chop the body up and just didn't have the stomach for it or something, but whenever a body is found and someone has taken that much time to wrap the body up and place the body in this box and weigh it down and put it into the river thinking that it's never going to float and probably will just settle on the bottom of the river. The current was probably too strong. And um, they just probably didn't weigh it down good enough, you know. But I think, and I'm no expert by any means, but I think some experts might say that whenever someone takes the time to go to the trouble to wrap the body up and to, they kind of are trying to, in a way, protect the body maybe, or at least pr protect it from coming apart and getting out there you know they want to try to kind of whoever it was didn't want to go to the trouble to try to bury the body and um, in the case of the little boy in the box in Philadelphia which happened five years prior to this um, they just put the child's body in a blanket wrapped it up and put it in a box in the woods this tells me that they kind of wanted the little boy's body to be found, and they placed in his body in an area that was well known to hunters, to trappers. I think someone said in one of the comments that there was a pathway there that led to like a, a college or a school of some kind, and a lot of people passed through that area. I think that whoever put his body there probably knew that, that it would be found eventually. Not that they cared about the child, because if they did, they would have never have been able to just leave him out there like that, you know. Her body was found with a March 11, 1962 issue of the Philadelphia Daily Bulletin. So that tells me that... Why, were, why was there a newspaper in there? Was it just something to maybe soak up blood, or was it something to maybe act as another source of um, 
wrapping the body or were they hoping that someone, if her body was ever discovered, it was kind of like a time um, capsule to say this is, you know, when this took place. Um, Hattie was the only girl reported missing in that time and space that matched Jane Doe's case. But as quickly as this idea was raised, it was dropped again. One of the reasons why this theory was dismissed is because it had been 10 months from the time that Hattie disappeared until the time that the other little girl would, would have been killed. Now, that's no big stretch when you look at cases like Elizabeth Smart, um, others, I can't think of some of the names of some of these. Look at the people that are in, um, was it Milwaukee or Chicago? I, I think Milwaukee, where these uh, women were kept in this house by this man for years and later found to be alive, you know? Um, similarities exist between the two children, despite the fact that the Jane Doe was missing her head. They were both estimated to be around three, three feet tall, and um, they both were African Americans of similar weight. Um, if the Jane Doe and Hattie were the same person, it still remains a mystery. However, in the case of Hattie, there is a person of interest. This was Thomas Welton Holland, who already had a record of interstate robberies and had committed sex crimes against children. Although no evidence ties him to the disappearance, he does resemble a sketch of the man who was seen at the park before Hattie vanished into thin air. There are still a lot of unanswered questions. Was the man who made the offer to the children the same man? What happened to Hattie? If it was Hattie, they're asking what happened in those 10 months. Well, I think it's probably kind of cut and dry what happened to her in 10 months if this was the same man because he probably sexually abused her and kept her in some type of captivity. You know, the police believed at the time that she could be six-year-old missing child Hattie Yvonne Jackson, who had been abducted in Washington, D.C. ten months prior. Hattie is still missing and is the only child I know of who matches the physical description of this child. I can't find any articles to say that she was ruled out. They kind of did rule her out because of the time lapse. But like I said, and like some other people have commented, this is a possible case they need to... I, I'm assuming that they were able to take DNA from the body. Now, keep in mind, 1962. I'm not seeing anything here. Okay, here, here we go. Article posted August 7, 2018. Philadelphia, I guess they mean like the city, the police, just exhumed her body, as well as six other identified people today, for DNA testing, we might find out who this child is after all. Now, I'm going to click on this link. I hope it doesn't destroy my computer, and I hope that the article is still here. <laughs> this is dated August of 2018. Investigators exhume the graves of seven homicide victims, hoping to uncover clues in these cold cases. Um, let me go through here and see if I can find the article about her. There is one lesser known case of The Girl in the Box, a crime eerily similar to Philadelphia's infamous Boy in the Box. Well, I wouldn't call them similar in any other way than they had both been 
disposed of and were unknown. They both were disposed of in boxes and they were both unknown, unidentified children. Um, and both had apparently, according to the reports of their bodies, had both been abused. She was a little African-American girl found in 1962. She was inside a box and thrown into the river. She had been dismembered and murdered. Uh, she's been lying in an unmarked grave since 1962. Advances in DNA technology and facial recognition give these dedicated investigators a new shot at solving a mystery. There are a couple of hundred people buried in this field. They die these violent deaths, and many of them are unknown. They are known to someone who may have loved them, but maybe those people don't know what ever became of them. Dealing with victims who have, been in, who have long been buried in unmarked graves, I really think everyone has a right to have their name attached to them upon death. Detectives encourage anyone with a missing relative to do an oral swab and enter it into DNA to be cross-referenced. But like this article said, these people may not even know. And after so many years have passed, these people may not even... Some of us right now may be sitting in our home related to by maybe 20, 30, 40 years, a distant cousin, um, a great, 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 great nephew, or, you know, that we may not know about. Or a great, 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 great uncle of some, you know, uh, out there in the world that we may not know about. And um, so... To say someone out there is waiting, someone out there has a missing relative, you may not know that you have a missing relative in your past, you know? So that's why they do encourage people to give their DNA to these um, genealogy bases and, and, you know, go on all day about these cases that have been solved or um, are still being researched and hoping to be solved. And someone made a comment on my video of the boy in the box about how little we all know about DNA and was giving us a lesson about it. And I'm, I appreciate people who do come on there and give feedback that adds to the story and adds to the information that I might overlook. And just like this story, there was so little to go on. But each story that I will start to make a video about and start to talk about will lead to another story. Just like this story leads me to the information about this man who was a suspect in the disappearance of this child and his history of, of sexual abuse of children. So who were his victims? You know, so there's another completely different story. But there were so many articles about African-American women and girls, but most of these girls that I was trying to find any information I could on young, missing children, African-American girls, between the ages of three and maybe seven or eight, but most of what I was finding was teenagers, 12, 13, 14, and on up, 16, and then women. And there's so many, there's so many, there's so many missing people in the world. I know someone told me they enjoy listening to my videos, but that the content can be a little bit hard to follow, you know, listen to because it's about missing, murdered people, unidentified people, unsolved murders. But I look at it like these people were someone's, even this little boy in the box, I, I told someone in a comment that I made the other night that someone had commented on my video and I responded to it and I said, I can only hope 
that whoever this child's birth mother was is maybe when she sold the child or gave the child away to somebody else, she might have thought she was giving them a better life. And if this story of this Martha was true, whoever ended up selling the child to this couple, this woman, they probably did see it as giving this child a better life or at least putting some money in their pocket. They may not have cared at the time what happened to the child. Um, why no one ever came forward and said, you know, this could have been the child that I gave up for adoption. Um, I don't think the police were going to be so much focused on the fact that someone sold the child that's a secondary, uh, lesser crime in their eyes. What they're interested in is finding out who this child belonged to and the reasons why he ended up in that field and who put him there. And as time goes on, this the, the possibility of finding anybody responsible, I think that ship has sailed. I think that this couple were the ones. I think the story that this girl told was the truth. And I want to say one more thing before I end. I didn't mean for this video to run as long. Keep in mind that this story, when I, when I refer to this girl, this Martha, as a girl, at the time that this child died, she would only have been about 14. So when she says her mother told her to bathe, bathe the child and cut his fingernails, she was pretty much a child herself and was probably under the control of these people as well as the little boy had been and was probably scared of what might happen to her if she didn't obey. She did not come forward days or weeks or months after this took place. She did not come forward for many years. I think, if I remember right, it was said that the, the, um, she along with the help of her psychiatrist, had contacted the police in 2002. She was scared, probably waited until after both these parents were dead. And, and once she started to get counseling for her childhood trauma, which was mislabeled as mental illness, according to the reports of the police who said they couldn't take this story seriously because she had a history of mental illness. Show me in her history where she was mentally ill. If she worked for a major pharmaceutical company and had a Ph.D. in science, probably biology or chemistry, this woman probably had no more mental illness than childhood trauma that was between her and her psychiatrist. So tell me how they would have been able to say that she had a history of mental illness. I stand firm by my belief that this was swept aside and, and, and it was reported that she had mental illness to give people out in the public who might come across this and find out about this and say, oh, she was just one of these crazy people who, you know, had these crazy theories. But I think the truth of the matter is, is that they knew very well who these people were and didn't want a big uproar in the city, in the community. And I, I didn't mean to get started talking about all that, but I just wanted people to keep that in mind. It was many years. This woman was probably well into her 50s maybe closer to 60 before she ever came forward and told this story. And then she was dismissed and called a crazy woman. If someone else is alive out there and knows the truth about this, and this Martha woman is getting up in age now, I would, I would estimate her to be right around 80. And they said that she had left the United States because of all this, because of her name getting out there and everything. I would encourage her to come forward and say, here's 
here's the truth, whether the police want to admit it or not. You know, reach out to um, Dr. Phil. <laughs> reach out to Dateline. Reach out to someone who will sit down and give you a voice, you know. And as far as the little girl in the box, I know I, I got started talking about a completely different story. Um, Hattie Yvonne Jackson is who the child was thought maybe to have been. And I know that that would be a completely secondary story if the two little girls were different children. Um, Grateful Doe on Reddit. Philadelphia Jane Doe. The child's remains were found. It just goes on to tell the same story about how she was found. and um, Someone famous, Ohio Applehorn, it, uh, commented... She's one of my pet cases. Her murder never got as much attention as the boy in the box. I've hoped for a long time that they both get justice. Maybe one day, just like with the boy in the box and all these other cold cases and unsolved and unidentified, maybe DNA will one day say that it was this little girl. Um, I think that now, with the fact that so many people have been discovered alive years later after they've gone missing, the police should not be so quick to dismiss that maybe 10 months had passed in between these two cases, that it may very well have been the same child. Uh, Washington, D.C. and Philadelphia are not that far apart. And sometimes pedophiles, they said this man had been charged with crimes um, in different states, sometimes pedophiles will go outside of their own area looking for a child because they're not recognized in a different city. And if this is ever solved, if any new information ever comes out about this, I do try to follow these Reddit posts and different um, pages to see if anything new pops up. I will make an update and I appreciate y'all for listening. I did not mean for this video to run as long as it did. And thanks again.